What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome to a short video looking at some basic to intermediate usage and configuration options available on Canon's EOS R5. In this video we're going to be looking at the basic premise of moving the autofocus point. Now the camera has a number of options that are available for doing this and that's what we're basically going to walk through and look at here. So let's start with the default. If we jump down and look at the camera here, the default method is to essentially press the autofocus point select button and then use either the multi-controller or the front or main command dial and quick control dials. You can use either the either of the quick control dials. They control vertical. The front dial controls horizontal. Uh, the the multi-controller just moves it and pressing the multi-controller in will recenter the autofocus point. Now, obviously, there's some pros and cons to this method. Uh, the pro is that because it's behind the autofocus point selection menu, you have uh, less of a chance of accidentally changing your autofocus point uh, when you don't intend to. Con, obviously, is, as much as it is a con, is that you have to switch into the autofocus point mode to change the autofocus, or to move the autofocus point. You can't do it just directly while you're shooting. The other default way of changing or moving the autofocus point, at least if you're shooting with the rear LCD, is to simply touch where you want the camera to put the autofocus point or hit the recenter button to recenter it. Now, when you do this, the camera will focus wherever you touched after you touch that point. So it's touch, the camera will focus. It won't necessarily take a picture unless you have touch, uh, touch shutter enabled, but it will focus on whatever you, wherever you moved when you you uh, touch on the rear screen. Option number two to speed up the ability to move the autofocus point is to enable touch and drag autofocus. So to do this, we jump back down to the camera and we're going to jump into the menus and we're going to go to the AF1 menu and we're going to go to touch and drag AF settings. Obviously, for the first entry, you want to set it to enable. The positioning method for touch and drag focusing uh, or touch and drag AF, essentially what touch and drag AF does is it turns the LCD panel on your camera into uh, a touch pad like you would have on a, a laptop or a tablet's keyboard or that kind of thing. So you have two choices here in the positioning method. One choice is to use... Uh, relative positioning in which case this works exactly like a touchpad does on a laptop you move your finger and it moves autofocus point from wherever it was to wherever in the direction you moved your finger by however much you move your finger you can also set this to absolute in absolute mode it works very similar to a graphics tablet if you've ever used one of those or using a an apple pencil on an ipad that kind of thing in that where you touch on the screen becomes exactly where it puts the autofocus point the final settings that you have available to customize the touch and drag af is the portion of the screen that it's used the active touch area this can be the whole screen the left or right half the top or bottom half or any of the four quadrants so upper left upper right lower left lower right basically allowing you to customize where you have to uh, reach or where it's sensitive to your touch based on how you want now i personally don't use touch and drag af so I can't offer any tips on what you might want to do for setting it up for yourself. So I would just suggest play with it and see if you find something that works for you or that's comfortable. Now, pros and cons. The first, uh, well, I guess the pro is that you can move the autofocus point much more efficiently or effectively uh, compared to having to jump into the menu. The cons are, well, so there's a couple things. First of all, touch and drag AF only works when your view eye is up to the viewfinder and the viewfinder is active so that you're, you're shooting that way. You can't use touch and drag AF when you're just using the screen. You would just touch where you wanted the camera to focus and it would focus there and take a picture. The second con of this whole thing is that some configurations can be fairly awkward. Uh, depending on which eye you use and therefore where your nose falls on the back of the camera, you can, in the um, 
full screen and the left half modes or anything that uses the left half of the screen, especially in absolute uh, positioning, those can be kind of awkward to reach to or very awkward to reach to if you're using your you're trying to use your right thumb and you know you have to reach all the way across essentially the camera to get to that active area and additionally if you're using a vertical grip you have to be also careful of where you you have your active area set up as for example if you have it set to the top right corner of the screen which is great from the normal shooting position it's extremely it's an extremely awkward long reach from the vertical grip shooting position to get to that area the third option, and this is how I use my camera, is to set the multi-controller on the back of the camera to always control the autofocus point. So the setup for this is pretty straightforward. If we jump into the camera and we go to the custom function three menu and we go to customize buttons, we can scroll all the way down to the bottom to the multi-controllers and change that to direct AF point selection. Now, if you're not familiar with the EOS R5, there are two columns in the uh, customization of buttons menu. The column on the left with the still looking camera above it is for still photography. The column on the right with the movie looking camera above it is for video shooting. And you can have the buttons do different things in the different modes based on your uh, how you want to configure it. So you may want to set this for both video and still shooting. Anyway, with that set, you can now move the autofocus point anywhere you want using the multi-controller without having to enter the autofocus point selection mode. Additionally, you can push the multi-controller in directly and that will recenter the autofocus point. Now, obviously, pros and cons. Again, this is certainly faster to do than hitting the autofocus button to change points and you know doing the same kind of uh, procedure. Additionally, due to where Canon has, uh, due to the fact that there is a second multi-controller on the grip and the where Canon has located it, it's fairly comfortable to switch between the standard shooting grip and the battery grip shooting grip and still be able to move the autofocus point around, you know, effectively and without a huge difference in, you know, ergonomics and where you're reaching. Now, a con of this is obviously if you bump the multi-controller, you can move the autofocus point when you don't intend to. Uh, additionally, it may not for some users be as smooth or slick as touch and drag AF because you are basically uh, controlling your autofocus point with an analog stick as opposed to controlling it with a touchpad. And depending on you know what you're accustomed to or comfortable with, there's going to be potential differences in speed. So I hope this tip helps you. If you found this useful or interesting, please consider smashing that like button. Please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you next time.